Hello, maybe it will work. You understand? Yeah? Right. Now, recursive work like that. Alright? We have a huge problem. World hunger. Alright? We don't solve it. What we do? We go in, further in. We break down the problem into smaller parts. Okay? From world, we went to Malaysia, then we went to Slamo, from Slamo, we went to the IUC. You understand? Alright? What is our problem? Hunger. Alright? The problem is still the same, but the solution, alright, we cannot figure out at the higher level, so we go deeper. Right, Emma? So when you apply, when you immediately get the results, or solution for the um, problem, then you apply it to the lowest level, the smallest part of it. Then you roll back, same one, you apply to the next level, and so forth, until you solve the problem. So that's what the person is all about. Alright? You understand enough? Okay? So, let's take a look at recursive. You must understand and able to describe what is the concept of recursion. Right? Solving problem using recursion. Alright? Trace the recursive method problem. Of course, we need to analyze the efficiency. No? Alright. So, let's see what is the recursion. It is a problem solving process that breaks the problem into identical but smaller problem. Alright? Earlier, when I give you the question, I said hunger. That is the problem, right? Okay, when I say world hunger, it's the same problem. When I say Malaysia hunger, same problem. Alright, when I say your friend, one friend problem, is hunger as well. Right? So here we break them down into identical smaller problem. Eventually you will reach the solution, direct solution. Alright? Direct solution, you use that solution to solve your previous problem. And eventually your original problem will be solved. Alright? Okay? Okay. Now, recursive or recursion is alternative to iteration. Do you know what the iteration means? It's a loop. Okay? Loop. Okay? So, of course, we are learning Java. So, we have a loop, uh, for instance, for loop, loop. Yeah? For loops. Then we have while loops. Right? We have do loops. Huh? Okay? This is alternative with the loop. It is very powerful to solve certain problems, right? Otherwise, it can be very complicated, no? very complex. Okay? Now, let's take a look at some of the terms. Recursion. Recursion is a problem of solving, alright? It's a process of solving a problem by reducing it, it to a smaller version of itself, okay? Now, so, you see this image here? Okay, it's the same image again and again, it's just a smaller version of it, yeah? Alright, so then, definition, we can define it as in terms of smaller version of itself. Huh? Something is defined in terms of a smaller version of itself, okay? So basically, we also can define it in terms of base case, right? A base case is basically when you receive immediate results for your solution, we call it as the base case or we call it as a stopping case. The next word, the stopping case. The case which the solution is completely directly. Alright? So, with my earlier question, where did we find the solution? When you're able to solve one person hunger, isn't it? Alright, so what, what is the solution? If you able to provide or share food with one person, alright, then you can solve that problem, isn't it? That means providing and sharing food is 
your solution, all right, to reduce world hunger, all right. So that is the direct solution we have, and you can apply it until be able to solve the original problem, all right. Now, recursive case is a case in a recursive algorithm which problem is specified as a smaller version of the original problem. So these are the, some of the terms you will be going through, okay? Then we have algorithm, of course this is the algorithm uh, that describe the smaller version of the problem. Right, then we have recursive method, a method, okay, just like add, Remove, right? Remember, you learn add, remove all from your uh, ADP collections. Huh? So similarly, here also we have the recursive method. All right, this is where we uh, write the algorithm to implement the method. All right, so let's take a look at a step. All right, do you know what is the factorial? All right, factorial is basically when you have the number, you multiply the numbers, okay? In our iterative solutions, what we do is that we take, let's say factorial 4, we take 4, multiply 3, multiply 2, multiply 1, and this is the answer you're going to get, all right? So here, the general concept here is that a zero factorial to one, all right. A zero factorial is to one, all right. Now n factorial will be n multiply with n minus one. So this is n minus one. Four is my n value. The next number is n minus one will be three, and followed by n minus two. Minus three and so forth until you have n is more than zero, right? So then n is more than zero, right? You understand it? Okay. Now let's take a look at recursive method. Now recursive method, what happens is that we take four, we multiply by three factorial. Okay. What is three factorial? 3 factorial is 3 times 2 factorial, right? What is 2 factorial? 2 factorial is 2 times 1 factorial. So what is 1 times, 1 factorial is 1 times 0 factorial. Now, do you know what is the 0 factorial? 0 factorial is 1, isn't it? That's the direct solution, I know about it, all right? So what I do is that 0 factorial A, 0 factorial is 1. So since I know what is a 0 factorial, I will able to solve what is 1 factorial. 1 times 1 equal to 1. So what is 1 factorial is 1. So here I know what is 1 factorial, right? So 1 factorial okay, is 1. So 2 factorial will be 2 times 1 equal to 2, all right? So I know what is 2 factorial. 2 factorial is 2, right? So I have for 3 factorial, all right? So 3 times 2 factorial, which is 2, equal to 6. Now I know what is my 3 factorial. And then, of course, I will able to get my answer. You understand? Same problem, finding out the factorial, alright? And I know the answer for zero factorial is one, and that's how you do it. Alright? You see how recursive work? Yeah? Alright. Okay, now the principle on the right thing, yeah? principle for your recursion, every recursive Definition must have one or more stopping case. Now, where is the stopping case here? Now, I do not infinitely, you know, break down into smaller parts. I must have solution, right? Okay, my stopping case is here. This is where I stop. 
finding solutions because I already found the direct solution. Alright, got it? Okay. Now, so you may have more than one stopping case. So stopping case, stop the recursive. Okay. Now recursive case must eventually reduce to stopping case. Okay. It must stop somewhere. Alright. And stopping case must stop. Okay, the recursive. This is the rules and principles that you have to follow. If it doesn't stop, it's infinite loop. Okay. Alright, so let's take a look at the implementation. Alright, now the implementation here. So this is my stop stopping case or base case. Alright, sometimes you'll come across as a base base case. Eh? Alright, now if n equal to zero, alright, so n equal to zero, you return one. L you return n multiply with n minus one. Is this correct? Alright, so let's say if I have four factorial, what do you do? My n value is four, right? Is n Four equal to zero? No. So it goes here. So four multiply with three factorial. So what is the three factorial? So we call this is recursive call. We call back again. So now what is my n value? N is three now. So is three equal to zero? No. So 3 times, now n minus 1 is 2. So we call back again. Alright? So this is recursive call. Alright? So this is recursive method. This is recursive call. We call back the same method again. So now n value is 2. Is 2 equal to 0? No. So come back here. So that's how we go through the recursive method just like this all right yeah until recursive become all right come to the stopping case so now eventually your n value will be zero correct so n will be zero then you return one all right so then you roll back again all right okay now another example is when you have a problem uh, such as program stack, right? Stack, how stack works? First in, first out, last in, first out, okay? Last in, first out, all right? Stack works like last in, first out. So here, this is how it looks, illustration of a recursive call. Alright, so first you'll have n values too, and you'll have this address, okay, you call another method, alright, and then recursive call, huh? so you call back and reduce to the last element, alright. Alright, <clears throat> now, this is the algorithm, now we have to trace the algorithm. Do you know what is the dry run? When you have a program code, do you understand what is a dry run? Yeah, dry run is that you run the code on a paper and figure out what is the answer. Okay, so here, okay, we also have recursive trace or also known as the box tracer. Alright, now, how what we do here is we illustrate the execution of the recursive method. Alright. We use a box. Okay. Each box corresponds to recursive call. In the box, we indicate the value and the statement will be executed. Alright. And when you have a new recursive call, we use an arrow now to call for the new method, recursive method, and the value will be written by using an arrow, upward arrow. Huh? So let's take a look at this. For factorial, right? Factorial. Huh? So let's take a look at this. So let's say if I have a factorial 3, 
My N value is 3. My recursive call, this is the argument, uh, N multiplied by factorial N minus 1. Is that correct? Okay. And this part here. Alright, so here, this part here, this is your recursive value, this is your recursive call, alright? So we have n value is 3, and this is the recursive call, 3 times factorial 2. So factorial 2 is the recursive call, then we will have the max box to indicate the recursive call when n is 2 what we have to return 2 times factorial n minus 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1 all right then we use the arrow downward until n equal to 0 return 1 so you plug in 1 up so here is 1 1 times 1 is 1 so you put it upward so, 2 times 1, 2, and so forth. Do you understand? Alright, so this is the trace box or known as the recursive trace. Okay? Alright, now, you have to think about logically here. Alright, you have to think about logically here. Here, we have to, the method, uh, having unlimited copy of Excel. Every recursive must have its own code, its own set of parameters, and also local variable. Alright? And make sure you have the environment where you can go back to the previous call and then explore up. Alright, now let's try this one out. Okay, how to write a recursive method for this? Okay? How do you write the recursive method? Let's say if I were to have n value as um, n value as uh, 4 maybe, okay? n value of 4. So we have 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 8, 1 over 4. Okay, what is the answer? Alright, can you guys try this one out? How to write a recursive call for this? If my n value is 4, it should be 1 plus 2 plus 3 3 plus 1, 4. So, what is the answer? How do you write? Okay, try it out. I'll give you 2 minutes maybe. Alright, because this call. What is the name of this method? Sum series. Okay? So, my recursive call, how do I write? Okay? Maybe I can say public in sum series input n. Alright? Parameters will be n. What is my stopping case? Okay, we have to determine the stopping case. Where do we stop? When do we stop? Where do we stop? How do we stop this? Huh? How do we stop this? Any idea? Hmm. Alright. Can you see this? Alright, so as 
as I say, this name is already given in the question. This is your recursive call or recursive method, sorry. Right? My topic case is less than 0, n is less than 0, you return 0. Okay. If n is equal to 1, you return 1. Alright? So if my n is just 1, alright? 1, what happened? I just have 1, isn't it? Right or yeah. not? Yeah? So that's my answer. Okay? Last one. That one is my answer here. This is the topping case. Alright? So let's take a look at this. N minus 1 plus 1 point 0 because it's a double the divide by the n. Alright? See this? Okay, so here is where I'm calling the recursive call. Alright? You understand? Alright, now, box trace. Alright, how the box trace will be? Okay, box trace, I need an n value and what I'm returning? n value and the return function. The return here is my recursive call. Alright, so this is my recursive call. This is my n value. Okay, so try it. Okay, take a look at it and see how you can do it. Now we have some okay, three, three. So now if my n value is equal to three, what do I do? Okay, some value is three. What is my return function? My return function is this. Alright, write the whole thing in. Alright, this one the write the whole thing in. So 3 minus 1 plus, okay, 1 point 0 divide and value is 3. Alright, see that? That's what we're going to do here. So, sum will be 2 plus 1 point is 0 divided by 3. Okay? Divided by 3. So here. Alright? So here, sum of 2, then we have to go down another box. And equal to 2. So what will be your sum? Alright, can you figure it out? Yeah? By now you already figured out? So can you tell me what's the value of it?
So here is 1 divided by 3. 1 divided by 3 is no point in the middle, right? Okay? So you add these two up. Okay, 1.5 plus 0 0.33, you will have 1.83. And that's the answer. Alright? Now, in exam, alright? All these lines, these lines, and these parameters got marked. Here got maybe uh, one mark. Here maybe you have half a mark. If you don't draw this properly, and the box, as you can see, it looks like a staircase, isn't it? Right? If you don't draw it properly, you might lose right up to three marks. Okay, so here you will have marks for the output, you will have marks for this uh, arrows, and also marks for the box. Alright, so be careful. Alright, so how you draw. Alright, so that is the box tray. So to design, when you're designing recursive solution, alright, method. Okay, definition must provide parameters. Okay, now typically include if switch statement. One or more these cases should provide non-recursive. That means stopping case now. All right, so those kind of things you need to take a look at it. Some of the rules that you have to follow in general. All right, or structure. If the stopping case is reached, direct solution is found. Otherwise, call the recursive. Okay, that's one way. Another way is perform the common step. If recursive case, recursively solve the problem. And last one is stopping case has no action to be performed. But if recursive case, recursively you solve the problem. Okay, so these are the, some of the implementation. First one. Alright, so first one we say if stopping case is reached, problem solved, else you do your recursive. If stopping case is reached, alright, you solve the problem, else you call the recursive. So this is a recursive call. Alright, so that's the first one. Okay, second implementation, perform common step. If recursive case and recursively solve the problem, okay? Perform common step. If recursive method, if n is more than 1, then you call the recursive method, okay? And finally, alright, so here, okay, we have a value where we can call the recursive method. So this is also another way of a, uh, implementing of a recursive method. Alright, so box traits for your count three, implementation three. Alright, so now n equal to three, of course is more than three. Alright, okay. So we display the value and then we do the countdown. Okay. N equal to 2, because we are minus in 1, eh? display our value 2, and then you count down, and that's it. You see, so here you don't have any value we are returning, alright? So that's the one way of implementing. Alright, so make sure you list down all the stop case, list the recursive call, arrange case in correct sequence. So this is how we do it now. Eh? All right, now let's take a look at this, and this is another exercise where you can use to write the recursive method. All right, so here, what is the recursive method? This is the recursive name, where you have to send the n value and a value. All right, can you see any stopping case here? If k is zero, we can stop. If k is equal to n also we can stop, okay? Alright, if k is more than n, then, and here we are calling the 
this is called. So this this value is n. This value will be a. Alright. So let's take a look at it. So here, when k equal to zero or k equal to n, we return one. So this is the value that we are returning. If k is more than n, we have to return zero. Alright, otherwise this is my recursive form. Alright? Okay? Can? Alright, so we also can use recursive for an array. Alright, when processing an array, yeah, recursively we can do. We divide it into two different elements. Alright? One piece, the rest is another piece, last element is one piece and the rest of the array is another piece. So we divide it into half. Alright, now why we need this is that, okay, now for searching, right, when you have an array, you want to search, eh? alright, then it becomes easier, alright, to search, okay. So that's why we recursively divide our array. Okay, now here we have three types for decoding here yeah, to display our array recursively. So the first display is the display first element, then recursively dis display the rest. Okay. The second display will be display last element and display the rest recursively. And then the third one is we want to divide into halves. Okay? So here is the illustration. Alright. Alright, now for the efficiency. Alright. Yeah, efficiency is below end. The more data you have, more time it's going to take. Alright, now, so that is basically recursive, alright, so remember, for recursive, you need to uh, determine or decide your stopping case and recursive call, alright, when you have to make the recursive call, so that is very important, okay. Now, next, Tower of Hanoi, okay, do you know this? Alright. Okay, so back to our Google Classrooms, okay? Can all of you access this Google Classroom? Alright, you can access this now, you can try it out now. Alright, I want to have three, one this first. Alright, you can try this one out. Huh? You go to Google Classroom, it's already there on your feed, huh? on your screen. Alright, what is the move? Alright, so here, your Tower of Hanoi works like this. We have three tags, alright? A pole, okay, we name it as A, B, and C. Then we have the disc, which has different signs, okay. So the bottom disc is the biggest, the largest, all right. And on top of it, it has to be smaller than the bottom disc, okay. All right, so as you can see, we have three discs. So first disc is the largest. This second disc is the second largest and of course top disc would have to be the smallest. Now what we have to do is that we have to move this disc from the pole A or pack A to pack C. And the rule is not to place, alright, not to place the smaller disc. Alright, or bigger this on top of the smaller this, okay? Move one this at a time. Each this you move must be the topmost, okay? No this may rest on top of a smaller this than itself. 
and you can only store this on the second pole temporarily as long as you observe the first two rows. Okay? So that's how we're gonna move the the disc. Okay? So I have one disc from here. I move to that's it, done. So you can see how many are Second, so how many moves you make the right? First is of course so easy now. Alright? Now let's try it with two discs. Alright? Now please try it out. Check out the move you have. Okay? So now we follow the rules. I put it here, I take this, and I put it here, and this. Okay? So you can see I have done it in seven seconds and the move is three move by move. Target move also three. Alright? Now try it with three days. Okay. Tell me what is the the, the move? We're supposed to do it within seven. Can you guys try it out? See, can you get it seven? Will you try it please? Okay, on your phone. Whatever, try it. How many moves do you have? Okay, I'm going to simply do it. Uh oh. Alright. I'm going to simply do it. Huh? I already moved more. <laughs>
going to use this word using C. Alright? Then here, we're going to do is we're going to take this move. Alright? Move one there. And here, we're going to take this B and move it to C using A as a temporary fold. Alright? Okay? So just pay attention to this first. Okay? Now, move three this. Alright? So move three this is what? What are we doing? Moving three this, what are we doing? Okay? So now I'm going to write this solution for you. You take down. Alright, 
So what do you do? Here and minus one, correct? And here will be A. All right. And using C. So this is the beginning. All right. And this is the end using this. All right. Using this, we're going to move. This is the sauce bowl. And this is the end bowl. Destination. Using C. All right. Okay. Now, oops. So here, then we move like this from full start to end, and then we do the next element again, n minus one, using, all right, so we are using B, all right, B, okay, C, using A. Alright, so here using A, C, using, alright, so this is how we are, this is B and this C. Alright, okay, so this is how we move the, this. Okay, now another example that I want to give you is this, right, okay, I'm going to erase this point, yeah? I'm going to draw it here,
This will be first pole, second pole, and third pole. Alright, for example. Uh. Alright, the third thing is called A, N minus 1, A, C, and B. Alright, so when I plug in the number, this is what I will get. Alright, now, the middle one moves the disc from pole, the start pole to end pole is 1, 2, 3. Okay, this is the second one. Alright, N minus 1, B, a and C, so you have this value, right? So, recursive call, no? so recursive call again, I call back again. This is the value I'm going to get. My second line move for this from pole, uh, start pole to end pole will be 1 to 2 and so forth. So, if I were to take this value out, okay, so this is what I'm getting. Right, this is the last value uh, that I'm getting. Now, based on this, let's move our this. Okay? Try it also. Uh, based on this, let's move our this. Okay? So now, place, move. So you follow this now. Alright? So move. What are the days you have to move? So you move first one to the third one, uh, third one. Okay? Then you move first one to the second one. Then you third one, move to the second one. First to third. Alright? Finish? Yes. Alright, can? Can, can? Alright, then we move second one. To first, second one, okay, hey, sorry, second one to first, sorry, oh, oh, sorry, how do I end this? Alright, again, huh? sorry, 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 first, third, first is second here, I'm looking at this one, huh? okay, third, this second, first is here, two is one, two is three, and one is three. You see that? Alright, so that is the simple. So you, you can take the picture of this, right? Okay, so this is how if you were to... Okay, if you were to run this in terms of a recursive method, what are the results okay, that you can get? Okay, okay? Alright, now, so Tower of Hanoi is actually a very difficult problem to solve. Alright, when you have number of this increase, okay? But if you use this formula, you can figure out how to move the this okay now your recursive problem or recursive uh, let's say you have a problem which we think is simple all right so for instance all right we take the Fibonacci numbers all right what is the Fibonacci number do you know Fibonacci numbers do you know Fibonacci numbers? Fibonacci number is a number where you take the successive number will be total of the first previous two numbers. You take 1 plus 1 is 2. Alright, you take the these two numbers, okay, previous two numbers, 1 plus 2 is 3. Then you take the previous two numbers in order to get the number successive number all right so can we do this recursive method do you think it will be easier easy one take the two previous number add it up only one right supposedly easy right okay now the problem all right so we have when n is equal to less than one Okay, then we return one. Oh, very good. Okay. 
Okay, so we do this. Alright, two previous numbers we add up in order to get the successive number. Alright, is that correct? Okay, yes or not? Now, but when we analyze this, okay, the steps it involves, alright, so how are we going to calculate, okay, this value? Now, compared to our iterative solution, alright, iterative solution, remember just now I wrote down like this, right, this is how you make your, um, in order to find the solutions uh, on the bottom, this is how you do it. But for iterative solution, it's very fast. Using loop is very fast than using a recursive. So sometimes, all right, your recursive solution is not a good solution for certain problem. It could be a very simple problem, problem, but recursive solution is not a good solution. All right. Okay, so that also you have to take a look. Now, tail recursive, do you understand what is the tail? We did this before also, tail is something that at the end, uh, you perform at the end. Recursive you can do at the end. Alright, so you take a look at it. You also can have a mutual recursive, alright, where the recursive is called based on the different modules. Uh, so we will call each other this way, so that is the mutual recursive. Now, when to use iterations and recursive? When to use iteration? When to use recursive? Alright, both of course will solve the problem in a loop. Alright, but again, we have to take a look at the nature of problem and also the efficiency. Alright. Efficiency and nature of problem. Certain things you might think, oh, because it's easy to use, right? But efficiency is not, right? So then you have to choose, okay? How much space is allocated? What kind of variable is used, right? How much time, how many space that it requires, okay? So based on that, you have to decide. And sometimes, simple as, if you feel that the best solution for it is recursive, then that's the recursive solution. If you think the best solution is for iterative, then use the iterative. Alright? Okay, so that is for your recursive chapter. Alright? Now the most important thing that you need to know about this recursive is how to write, how to trace, and right, recursive doesn't stop here. We will be learning again, or we will be applying for searching and sorting. Alright, recursive for final exam will be always paired with your uh, searching and sorting. Usually, right? Okay, so that's it. Now what's going to come out for your test, whichever that I gone through in length, will come out. Alright? Okay, so that's it. Any question? Thank you.